Now that Yuji's cast his domain expansion, one of the craziest fights in the entire series is about to take place. An awakened Yuji with his domain expansion is going to take on Ryomen Sukuna, the King of Curses, for a climactic battle that will be the greatest fight in JJK that will determine how it all ends. But this fight will not go the way that you think it will. This fight truly will be a spectacle and a lot of amazing and surprising things will come our way. I guarantee you this fight will not end the way you think it will. And Gege has already foreshadowed and revealed this in the story itself already. And although it does seem obvious like who's going to win this fight, I assure you the outcome will shock you completely so let's just get right into this be sure to leave a like on the video it helps out a ton thank you and of course if you haven't already be sure to subscribe for a ton of consistent and quality JJK content just like this less than 10% of people who watch my videos are subscribed so if you love JJK I assure you you won't get subscribing and of course thank you to the special green members of the channel it's always much appreciated guys all right so first things first right now we have Yuji with his domain expansion and he's caught Sukuna inside it Sukuna is genuinely at Yuji's mercy at least that's what it sounds like from what Yuji said where he said that Sukuna I can kill you at any time that I want so free Megami Fushiguro. So just how will this fight go in the chapter that's going to come out in a couple hours? Well, first I'll split this video down into two parts. The first part of the video will be me discussing how the fight is going to go for Yuji and how the fight will go for Sukuna. And the second part of the video will be me discussing just how this fight will end and why I really think it's going to be a completely unexpected outcome that you're not expecting. So let's talk about Yuji first. Yuji right now seems to be in a really great place. He hasn't healed his body yet with reverse curse technique because it seems like what we're seeing right now is the soul of Yuji, not his physical body. But for all we know he could have healed his body with reverse curse technique off screen but at the very least Yuji is in a great place he's got his domain expansion popped off he's genuinely got Sukuna at the mercy of his fingertips and even though he said he doesn't exactly know what's going on inside of the domain at the end of the chapter he does say that Sukuna I can kill you anytime I want so if you don't free Megami I will do this so it does seem like his goal right now first and foremost is to free Megami this isn't really that surprising since we also saw this with Gojo when he was fighting Sukuna we said he'll bring Sukuna as close to death as possible for Megami and then once again, even Yuta and Yuji, when they were fighting Sukuna inside of Yuta's domain expansion, the whole point of all of that was to actually free Megami, to get a chance to talk with Megami. So that's what's going on with Yuji right now. He does seem to have a sure hit that can kill Sukuna. At least that's what he thinks. He could be wrong because there's been many times characters have assumed that they can just kill Sukuna or that they've guaranteed victory and it still hasn't gone the way that they fought. That's been showcased this entire Sukuna fight where it's happened dozens of times, to be honest, such as when Gojo caught Sukuna in his domain expansion or when they hit Sukuna with the Jacob's Ladder, when Maki stabbed them through the heart, just all of these plans, even though it seems like guarantees that Sukuna has lost, with this man you really just never know. It truly is Sukuna Kaisen so he could just find a way to somehow survive. It genuinely would not surprise me at all if he somehow survived the Shah hit, even though Yuji guarantees the kill. But we still must take into account that Yuji is really confident that he can do this. It could just be a bluff, that's what some people are theorizing, but I'll just take it at face value and as a fact for now that Yuji is being genuine and at the very least what Yuji should hit is something very lethal. Now as for Sukuna's situation, really he's in quite a tough spot. He's trapped inside the domain, even though he's got his reverse curse technique back, still his cursed energy is not at max capacity, it's actually a bit less than half, he's still got his general output nerf and he does have technique burnout, so he can't cast domain expansion and all that things, and as far as we know he still should have the binding vow where if he uses domain expansion it would still be really nerfed. But again, that's only what we know so far. And what also makes it worse for Sukuna's situation is the fact that yes, even if he somehow survives Yuji Shah hit or takes a lot of damage from it but makes it out alive, of course there's going to be the other sorcerers from Jujutsu Hai who can still fight Sukuna. It does seem like a lot of them are out of commission. From last we saw Kusakabe, Angel, Toto, Yuten Gojo's body, all of them really seem to be completely out of commission but of course we can't just count them out yet. Probably the only one that you could probably count out is Yuta because of the time limit but everybody else just because they've taken a lot of damage or just because they're on the verge of death, that does not mean that they can't reappear later. As we've seen this happen with Maki where she took a lot of damage and even took a black flash but then she did reappear after she had some time off screen to heal and this even happened with Yuji himself where he got quite a devastating blow after Yuta's domain expansion and he was not able to keep fighting but of course after he had some time to use reverse curse technique and heal he then later rejoined the fight so just because these characters seem to be out of commission or really are out of commission it doesn't mean that they can't come back because Shoko does exist and reverse curse technique and healing that all does exist so in that situation if Yuji is able to buy enough time with Sukuna and do a lot of damage with his domain expansion even if his domain breaks or somehow they clash out. In that scenario, then a weakened Sukuna would have to face a healed up Jujutsu Hai, granted still very injured, and of course Yuji, who's really powerful right now. Like, there's no exaggerating just how powerful he is. And of course, it's made worse if the sure hit of Yuji does soul damage and actually affects Sukuna's output even more. In that scenario, that's the worst case for Sukuna, trust me. Because then he'll just truly lose, as he even said himself before, if he keeps taking this soul damage, he's going to lose. So, yes, if Yuji can just do that, then he'll likely win. And now that I've said the circumstances, let's talk about how this fight 
fight will actually go. And of course, if you've been enjoying so far, leave a like, it helps out a ton. Thank you. Atosh Dolimini. Now, as for how this fight will go, I hope this answer doesn't shock you or doesn't come out to be a boring one, but I don't think either of them are going to win this. I don't think Yuji will truly win, and I don't think Sukuna will truly win. I think there will be a winner of the short term battle. So either Sukuna or Yuji, I think most likely it's going to be Yuji, right? He's the MC, he's got all these power ups, and this is the climax of the fight. Sukuna does have to lose at some point. It's not like the series is going to end with Sukuna winning, although that would be pretty funny, that would be pretty interesting if that's what happens, but yes, I do think Yuji will win the short term battle, whether it's alone of his domain expansion, whether it's with the help of Megumi, or whether it's with the help of Jujutsu High, I think short term, yes, he'll come out on top. However, I don't think he'll actually win the long term battle with Sukuna, and I've discussed this in previous videos before, where I think the key part of all of this is the merger, and I know a lot of people are thinking that the merger won't come out, or the merger is something that Gege is choosing not to do, I just think it's too important, and it is quite literally the reason all of this is happening, the Cullen games happened, Kenjaku gave his life for this, he gave the authority of the merger to Sukuna for a reason, it was the whole point they needed to protect Tengen, it's why the Tomb of the Stars arc with Yuki happened, if we don't get the merger, it will just be terrible writing, considering the fact that this has been built up for over half the story, and it's why this entire final mega saga has been happening. So I do think we'll see the merger, and a lot of people rightfully so are saying, but wait, Kaio, for the merger to be summoned, don't you need to kill all the players? Wasn't that a rule that Kenjaku made where, until all the players except Urume, Sukuna, and Kenjaku are killed, and yes, Urume is included, that was corrected by Gege later on, then the merger cannot be activated. Well, we have already seen that rules can be broken by the one who possesses Tenge. Kenjaku has made rules that go against other rules completely and bypass them, and he can do this because he has Tengen and he is able to blackmail Kogane and the Cullen games themselves to make rules that even override and counteract other rules. We've seen Kenjaku do this multiple times and the Kogane was forced to listen and make these rules. And guess who possesses Tengen right now? Yes, it's Ryomen Sukuna. So if Sukuna wants, he can simply make a new rule and blackmail the Kogane and simply say, make a new rule that I can summon the merger whenever I want. If you don't do it, I'll simply end the Cullen game by force with Tengen who I have authority and control over. This could be Sukuna's final gamble or final just big F you to the entire cast, especially to Yuji, where he summons the merger, even though they defeated Sukuna, and in theory, the merger shouldn't have been able to be summoned, he still manages to summon it by creating a new rule, and then all of a sudden, we have the merger rampaging. In this situation, I would actually consider it a draw, since yes, Sukuna did lose the fight, but then the merger is summoned, and now everyone has to deal with that, so it's not much of a victory for Yuji and everybody else as well. I guess that's more schematics. You know, if you really count that as a Yuji victory or not, I would still count it as a battle victory, but not a long-term victory for the overall battle, since it's not really done yet since they have to deal with the merger. As for how the Yuji and Sukuna fight will go, I think it's going to be a very cool battle, a very long and drawn out one. I know a lot of people are thinking it's going to end soon, but I truly do believe it's got more left to it. There's at least a couple more chapters to this, and we're going to see some really cool things from Yuji. Perhaps we'll even get to see Yuji's flames if his domain is similar to Sukuna's. And do remember, Yuji can summon the flames at any time that he wants. He doesn't just need to do it in a domain expansion, nor does he have the binding vows that Sukuna has where it's restricted in all these ways. Yuji doesn't have these, so if he wants, he can actually summon the flames even in regular combat like Sukuna did against Jogo. Of course, it just won't be nearly as powerful as when Sukuna used it after a domain expansion, but if Yuji's domain expansion is something that can cut things apart similar to Malevolent Shrine and it creates dust particles, then he can pretty much incinerate Sukuna with this show here. I mean, Sukuna might find a way out of it, but maybe that's why Yuji's so confident. He would do heavy soul damage to Sukuna, cut him up with cleaving his mantles, and then once the entire area is cut, Yuji would summon the flames and just incinerate him to ashes, which would be pretty cool. But how do you think Yuji vs Sukuna will end? Let me know in the comments down below. Paka paka. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, it helps out a ton. Thank you. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for a ton of consistent and quality JJK content just like this. Like I said in the intro, less than 10% of people who watch my videos are subscribed. So if you love JJK, I assure you, you won't regret subscribing. And of course, thank you to all the channel members as well. It's always much appreciated, guys. But that's all from me. Have a great day and take care.